All right, I think we are up and running. So we're going to get this meeting started. Hold on one second. Okay. So hold on a second, Tom. I mean, I see us on on YouTube. Anybody else have YouTube up and see us on? No, but it does say on my screen live on YouTube. It says that we're on. Yeah, That's I mean, horrific. I see it. I'm just getting uh, getting a text here from Mr. Paxton saying he can't find us. So I want to hold on one second. I clicked on the link in the um, agenda or the meetings, the video link, and mm -hmm. it just just sends me to uh, a page with uh, the last meeting we had. There should be a, a, a live button there. I don't see it. The meeting is launched on, um, what do you call it? Board docs from my side. I started the meeting. So maybe go back in. I didn't start the meeting before. So maybe that's why you can't see it. What, click on the video thing again? Yeah, go back and go go back to it. Uh, no, I don't see the two. I don't see it. Yeah, it's just the 420. Yeah. Even if you go to the link that's at the bottom, that's not live. Still the 420. Yeah, it's just the 420. Yeah. Even if you go to the link that's at the bottom, that's not live. Still the 420. No, at the top of our screen, on the Zoom screen, yeah, it says live on YouTube. Yeah. But I have Even us, if you go to the link that's at the bottom. I have us on YouTube as well. Still the 420. Yeah, when I went up there, I hit copy streaming link and uh, put it in and it worked. But I have yeah. Even if you go to the link that's at the bottom. I have us on YouTube as well. Still the 420. I have it on 420. Yeah, I have the 420. Copy stream. If you go to the agenda and for 427, right underneath the, the heading says live. And when you click on it, it brought me right right to our meeting on YouTube. Live? Yeah, like if you go go to you you go to board docs, right? Yeah, and, meeting. And you go to the meeting and you go to April 27th meeting, right? Yeah. It says agenda regular business meeting and right underneath it it's got uh, to say it says video. So if you hit yeah. video, it comes right up. It comes right up. It's there. Okay. All right, I, we're getting started. Mine didn't come up, but there might be, there's like a 10 second delay. Remember in my, my email to you, there's like a 10 second delay. So 
All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. And as per the open public meeting statement, the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of the public bodies at which time any business affecting their interests is discussed and acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Board of Education Policy 0162, the Board of Education of the Borough of Boundbrook has caused notice of this meeting to be posted in the Boundbrook office, uh, Board of Education office, and at Boundbrook High School and mailed or faxed to the Courier News, Borough, uh, Boundbrook Borough Clerk, South Boundbrook Board of Education, and any person who's requested an individual notice and paid the required fee. Um, at this time, we have to do the Pledge of Allegiance so um, I don't really have a flag for this. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Real quickly, before I turn this over for roll call, for those uh, of the public, if you'd like to participate in the board meeting, members of the, of the public must use the two agenda question air forms that are listed on the agenda one for agenda items and one for open to the public. Thank you. All right, Mike, if you could please give us a roll call, please. Mr. Autry, Mr. Ball. Here. Wait. Mr. Baum. Here. Ms. Musson. Here. Ms. Martinez. Here. Ms. Morris. Here. Ms. Stevens. Here. Ms. Rosamato. Here. Mr. Vadalair. Here. Ms. DeFazio. Here. Nine present. Okay, Tyler, uh, Mr. Archie did email us earlier today. He had a work commitment this evening, so he, he would not be able to attend. So at this time, President's comments. I hope everyone is holding up well. Uh, I know it's been very difficult for myself as a teacher. Um, I have to say, uh, you know, switching at that last minute was really a, a tough transition for me. So I, I really appreciate all of the teachers uh, in the district making that same switch. Um, also looking through the agenda tonight, I saw uh, the mindfulness training that you had done. And I just wanted to you know, send a shout out to all the teachers that participated in that because it seemed like uh, a large number of them really took it seriously. So that was good to see. Uh, and in, in, in today's craziness, uh, I think being able to take a breath and being mindful of is, is probably one of the most important skills we have. So good job to them. Yes, and we're going to continue with that training next year moving forward. So if we have more teachers who would like to participate in that, we will have opportunities for them to do so moving forward. Um, I do not have any other comments other than that. Um, we've had not we've not had any committee meetings as of yet. So we're going to go to open to the public for agenda items only. And there, like I said, there's a probably a 10 second delay on our feed. So um, let me see how many responses. We have three responses. So as I read them, I will refresh to see if any more come in. The first one is from Michelle Conover, a teacher at Smalley School. She is asking about 8.2, 8.4 transfers of grade levels to different buildings. Her comment is, do you think it was wise to make these transfers of grade levels this summer as we do not know the state of the coronavirus situation and how will classrooms get packed safely? When will this happen? In addition, you are doubling the student population at Smalley. This will greatly impact the schedule, the special teachers, special education classrooms, and ultimately fill this building right back up after the addition was built, which everyone believes would be for sixth grade. Uh, so sixth grade could fit back into Smalley. Why was this decision made at this time? Um, this particular decision was made a long time ago, actually. Um, it was part of our um, plan to do this addition as well as an addition on Lafayette. Um, and reduce the overall per footprint of the district from six buildings to four. Um, part of why we're moving third grade right now currently is due to space. Um, we need to get third grade and sixth grade back, uh, to get both of them over to Smalley because we need some more uh, instructional spaces for pre-K and special ed at the lower levels. And uh, unfortunately, um, you know, we're just moving a, a little quicker than we anticipated uh, with third grade, but that is due to space. All right, so the next question comes from Damaris. I'm gonna assume this is Damaris Cologne. I believe it is by her address, 324 Evergreen Avenue. 
approval of personnel. I noticed that all secretary positions were approved for the upcoming school year and that Mrs. Lavorni would be going to special services. My question is, will that job be posted or will secretaries be moved around? Um, I don't have a, a complete answer for that. Um, we will be hiring uh, another secretary, um, possibly uh, two secretaries, um, but that all depends on um, our budget and, and some of the things that we're still waiting on answers from, from our uh, government officials. The third question is the Maris again, and it's the same question, so I don't think I need to read that a second time. And let's make sure there's no other questions. And that is it for agenda items. So Dr. Gallagher, I guess to speak to the, um, the movement of the, the, the two different grades back to the Smalley School, how many new classrooms will be there in September? And you know, how, you know, how, is, is, will those accommodate the, the third and the sixth grade uh, appropriately? They will, we built 12 classrooms. Um, over at Smalley, um, two of which uh, out, out of the 12, two are gonna be uh, strictly special ed rooms, um, small group instruction rooms. Um, again, right now we only have five sixth grade classes. We're gonna have six next year, which will encompass one floor. And then you have six coming over from um, third grade, which would encompass the, the other floor. Um, so there's plenty of room in Smalley right now to handle those two grades. Um, obviously, we do have to do some transfer. Some of the special teachers we're going to have, have to add some special teachers. There'll probably be some full-time special teachers over at Smalley instead of splitting them up and having them in, in two different buildings. They'll probably be dedicated just to that building, which uh, for scheduling purposes actually helps us out having them located in one building for a full day. So there's no travel time, no issues there. Um, you know, there, there's you know, hope, we're hoping that it's going to allow us to have back the library and the music room and the art room. So let, those those rooms will be back as well. Um, again, we've talked about this for a few months and we've gone through and laid out laid out some plans. Um, it looks like uh, that should be housed very comfortably over at Somali. Now, as far as because uh, I, I don't know how they handle it here, but uh, as far as transferring transferring teachers material, obviously they didn't have any time, like if we don't go back in this school year, they have not had any time to really pack their stuff. How, how will that be handled? Um, Ms. Fisher and I have had those discussions for a couple of days now. We're talking about um, scheduling times for people to come in. Um, so we can stagger to make sure that we don't have more than like one teacher in one particular building at a time packing up their classrooms. Um, and obviously we have the summer to do that. Plus we have the, the, the maintenance people to move um, people uh, from one building to another. Um, so again, we'll just schedule that out like we would schedule a few things, like now, anything you, else. Do you provide like the, the packing material, like boxes yes. and stuff like that? Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, the only one thing that the only one thing that I will say is we might have to pay the teachers a hundred dollars for the day to come in and pack their rooms. But there's no furniture moving; it's just materials and stuff. So right. it could be too bad, Mr. Bell. Uh, the other building, obviously, that's being affected is Lafayette. Um, that's just going to be one and two now. Is that right? Correct. Um and, and and we're all, we're okay there as far as space. And uh, I know there's upcoming, possibly upcoming construction there. How's that all going to work out at Lafayette? No, we should be in great shape over at Lafayette. Um, right now, we're we're still in the planning stages of, of you know okay. producing plans. Um, DRG is is currently working on those. We'll probably have those probably next spring, um, and then we'll be probably be looking at saying, okay, how how are we going to do this? Obviously, we have a ground lease for Smalley. Um, are we going to do a ground lease? Are we going to go out for a referendum? Like, there's there's some questions we're going to have to ask. And as I said to the board before, um, and again, this may with this with this pandemic, this may have changed too. But I know there was um, talk of putting out on the ballot rod grants, which we would be. Uh, a very good recipient of a, of a rod grant, which would pay 65% uh, or 62% of, of a building project, which is which is the way I, I told the board a, a month, month and a half ago, would be the direction that that we probably should go if they if they do bring back the rod grants. Um, this way, the district and, and the community members are not putting 100% of these additions; they would be only um, putting out 38%. Okay, Miss Martinez. 
Uh, yeah, I, I had uh, additional comments on, on this agenda item. Did you want me to share them now or when we get to those items on the agenda? When we get to those items on the agenda. Got it. Okay, Ms. Rosavada. Uh, for the second going into third, how many current second grade classes and then how many third grade classes is there going to be? I think right now there's six third, uh, six third grade classes. So in fourth grade, there would be six. I believe second grade might be seven. Um, and third grade would be seven. Okay. So that's that my right on that seven in second grade, six. It's eight in second and, uh, oh. Seven and third. There you go. So I was I was off by a classroom on each. Okay. 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 Seeing no other questions, um, we're going to do personnel resolutions, district and high school resolutions. 5.1 uh, resolution the superintendent recommends for approval the resolutions as outlined in personnel resolutions under district and high school which is 5.2 through 5.13 so can i get a motion 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 mr fazio a second 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 was mrs morris Discussion. Ms. Rosamano. Uh, under 5.6, there's LDTC. What exactly is that? Learning disability um, teacher consultant. Okay. It's a special, a special services position. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Steinitz, can I get a roll call? Mr. Ball? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Musson? Yes. Ms. Martinez? Yes. Ms. Morris? Yes. Ms. Stevens? Yes. Ms. Rosamano? Uh, no for 5.2 and 5.3. Uh, hold on, I make note of that. No. 5.2 and 5.3. And 5.4. And 5.4. Okay. Noted. Mr. Vadalaire? Yes. Uh, Ms. DeFazio? Yes. Are you good, Mike? Yep. All right. Uh, personnel resolutions, middle and high school. Uh, resolve the superintendent recommends for approval the resolutions as outlined in personnel resolutions under middle and high school at 6.2 through 6.7. Can I get a motion? Motion. Motion, Ms. Fazio. Second. Second, Mr. Bohm. Questions? Okay, seeing none. Michael, roll Mr. call, please. Mr. Ball? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Ms. Musson? Ms. Musson? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Martinez? Yes. Ms. Morris? Yes. 
Mr. Stevens. Ms. Stevens? Yes. Okay. Ms. Ms. Russomano? Yes. Mr. Vadalair? Abstain. Okay. Ms. DeFazio? Yes. Okay. So we're up to Section 8, Education Resolutions, Middle and Elementary Schools. Resolved that the Bamber Board of Education approves the resolutions as outlined in education resolutions under middle and elementary schools. It is 8.2 through. Oh, you missed 7.1, I think. There's it's nothing under 7.1. There's 8.4. There's okay. nothing under 7.1. Okay. No problem. I'm moving then. Okay. There's nothing you got under 7.1. So it's 8.2 through 8.4. Four. Can I get a motion? Motion. Motion, Mr. Fazio. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Bale. Questions, comments, uh, Ms. Martinez. Uh, yes. So I I feel like last year when we moved when we announced the move of sixth grade, um, we got a lot of backslash from parents for having made that decision without their input. And then this year we're trying to move three grades without their input. And I understand that this was um, part of our larger plan to make our buildings footprint go get smaller. Uh, and that there are a lot of really good reasons uh, for this, this arrangement that we're looking into, um, you know, that'll benefit the students and the teachers. But I feel like if we keep making the same mistake of assuming that it's just okay to do these things without the input of parents when we've already seen once before that it, it means a lot to them to opine here. And when we saw that when we looked for their input, we were able to find a way, you know, maybe that didn't 100% satisfy um, community members, but did get them some things that they wanted, like they wanted the whole grade to be together. And so that did happen. And then the district on their part, they wanted to be able to, you know, have the space that they needed for that grade and, and we were able to. So I, I wonder if there's a way here at this point to also make sure that we are soliciting the opinions of the parents that these, and, you know, even the students, if possible, to see where we can go. You know, again, they might not get 100% of what they want and we might not get 100% of what we want, but I mean, I just don't want us to make the same mistake over and over again. Well, um, I, I understand your concerns and, and we do our best to um, listen to everybody's concerns and, and move things appropriately. Um, at this point in time with, with the district that's growing, there's some, some tough decisions that need to be made. And, you know, we, we, we've discussed this in public uh, before um, and we've discussed this in the committee before and, and we've not really heard um, comments from the public like we did when we were moving sixth grade. Yeah, so. well, I, rem I remember, if I remember correctly, when we moved in sixth grade, we had also shared that with the public ahead of time. And it wasn't until we made the official announcement that then, you know, people kind of started paying attention, which makes sense, right? We're, you know, we're listening to all sorts of different parts on the agenda, you know, maybe people are paying to other, other things, but once, once it kind of, it's verbalized like it was at today's meeting, I feel like then people are like, okay, well, you know, now I have a chance to react. Um, whereas before they were only passively being I'm given okay. the opportunity to to opine. And, and I, guess I'm, I'm always, I guess I'm hopeful that, you know, we can come up to a process where we could say, okay, this is what's gonna be on the agenda, you know, publicly say, you know, now is the time to share your opinions so that, you know, we can not have to backtrack later once we've already voted on on the item. Well, again, I understand what your concern is, um, but we did talk about this in public um, not that long ago, and we did discuss this in committees, and none of these concerns were brought up at that point in time. Now that they're on the agenda, they're being brought up, um, but we really don't have um, a, a mechanism to pull this off and then you know, rehash this one more time. Um, we need to plan. Um, Friday is May 1st. Um, you know, we need to plan and, and move forward. So I understand your concerns. Um, again, uh, going forward, we can take a look at 
um, trying to make sure we, we publicize this even more than we did this time and, and try to solicit more input. Mrs. Rosamana. Okay, can you just go through for everybody, um, like 3K all the way up through six, because that's really where everything is. Who's going to be in what building? Uh, class sizes, what type of what? What are we looking at as like maximum for each class size per grade? Um, just so that we okay. have an idea. Yeah, and, and Beth, if I, if I hit anything wrong, please jump in. So pre-K will be at Lamont, and those class sizes are maxed at 15. They can't go over 15. So kindergarten, we keep at 19 or less, and kindergarten will be at the annex. Then grades one and two will be over at Lafayette, and we want to keep those class sizes under ideally 22, but definitely 24. Um, three, four, five, and six, we want to keep them under 24. Um, seven and eight this year will be under 24 for the first time in a long time. They've been up at upwards of 28, 29, 30. So they'll be down. And then the high school is a little different, different uh, animal from nine through 12. But um, on average, I would say class sizes hover around 24, except for some electives that, that go up to about 30. I got it right, right, Beth? That answer your question, Ms. Rosamana? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No, but okay, just real thanks. quick, um, Dominic wanted me to let you all know that his internet crashed, so he'll be back shortly. Okay, no problem. I was wondering who fell off the screen here. Okay, um, Michael, roll call vote, please. Mr. Ball? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Ms. Musson? Ms. Musson? I can't hear you. I think, you're, I think you're, you're, you're muted. No, it's my headphones. Oh. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes? No. no. She voted no. No. Okay, no. Got it. Ms. Martinez? No. Okay. Ms. Morris? Yes. Ms. Stevens? Yes. Ms. Ms. Rizumano? Yes. Mr. Vadalaire, I'll mark him as not present. Ms. DeFazio? Yes. Thank you. Okay. We're up to section nine, special service resolutions. Resolve the Bound Report of Education approves the resolutions as outlined in special ed resolution six, uh, 9.2. Just 9.2. So, can I get a motion? Motion. Motion, Mr. Fazio. Second. Second. Second, Mrs. Morris. Questions? All right, seeing none. Mr. Simons, roll call vote, please. Mr. Ball. Yes. Mr. Bohm. Yeah. Ms. Musson. Yes. Ms. Martinez. Yes. Ms. Morris. Yes. Ms. Stevens. Yes. Ms. Rosamano. Yes. Mr. Vadalaire. Uh, I just got back. What are we on? Nine one and nine two. Yes. 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 Ms. De Ms. DeFazio. Yes. Thank you. All right. Moving on to financial resolutions. Resolved, the Bound Report of Education approves the resolutions as outlined in financial resolutions, 10.2 through 10.12. Can I get a motion? Motion. Motion, Mr. Fazio, second by Mr. Bohm. Questions? Mike? Yeah. Mr. Ball? Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 10.9, 10 the, uh, the safety grant program, what is that exactly that we're applying for? Uh, the safety grant program is through our insurance carrier. 
Um, they give out safety grants every year. Um, we get roughly about 13, 13 to $15,000. So we always apply for it so we can um, use that money for some items. I think this year we're using it for cameras for um, the football field. Okay. Ms. Rosamano? Uh, for 10-3, for um, the special education for the merit bonus, um, yeah. the audit was completed. Were all of the deficiencies from the audit corrected? Um, yes, all the, the filing deficiencies were corrected. The trainings that were recommended were done. Um, we have uh, some more trainings um, all set for further trainings all set going above and beyond for the summer and going into next year as well. Um, we have a whole new filing system um, that uh, Ms. Ferrer put together for uh, special services, which that stuff has been completed as well. Okay, um, and then you're still planning on leaving the same director in charge of the department that had so many issues to begin with. Kind of a little worried about that, but, um, and then the survey results for the um, mindfulness it says that there was supposed to be for um, staff and students were supposed to do a survey. I don't remember seeing anything for that. Okay, it should have been attached, but I will, I will make sure it is attached. Um, I'm not sure why it's not there. I think there was stuff for um, the staff, but I didn't see anything as far as the students. Okay. I'm wondering like, are, if they're actually engaging or not. Um, they're definitely engaging. We have periods of time that they're engaging um, to do mindfulness. So um, I will get you that information. I know that that stuff has been done. So I will get it to you. Okay. Dominic. So you posted the audit on the school district on Friday. The audit for what? I was just, uh, the special education. No, that's been up there probably for a few months. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I didn't see that we had it on there until today. No, that's been up there for months. Okay. I posted that when I read it at the board meeting. Okay, I probably wasn't at that board meeting then. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Steinman's roll call vote. Mr. Ball? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Ms. Musson? No. Okay. Ms. Martinez? On 10.3, uh, I'd like to vote no on goal one and yes on goal two, and then yes to everything else. Martinez, 10.3. You have a no vote, and what else did you say? Uh, everything else is a yes, but on 10.3, no on goal one, and yes on goal two. No on goal one, yes on goal two. Okay, noted. Uh, Ms. Morris? Yes. Ms. Stevens? Yes. Ms. Rosamano? No to 10.3, yes to the rest. Okay. Noted. Mr. Vadalaire? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm abstaining from 10.3 merit one, but yes to everything else. Vadalaire. Staying from 10.3? Uh, merit one. And then yes to merit two and everything else. From one. And yes on the rest. Okay. Ms. DeFazio. Yes. Thank you. We are up to other matters to come before the board and new business. Um, I just want to let the board know that um, 
as far as the evaluation, uh, we're going to make sure you guys get that out. Um, once that's done, that will produce the five goals for the district going forward. Um, that's usually where the, we kind of springboard. And at some point between now and the end of the year, we will also talk about uh, merit goals uh, for next year. So those are two separate things, because I know some people are getting confused between those two. Um, the one comes out of the superintendent evaluation and the other one we have to then decide as a board uh, what kind of uh, merit goals that we would want to set. So, you know, keep that in mind, think about it, and we'll discuss it shortly, I guess. Any other new business? Uh, do we have any update on if any schools are going to be open at all or like are expecting that or do we not have any idea no idea the, the, we're constantly getting mixed messages so one second it's there's a possibility the next second is doesn't look like it's going to happen so i would just sit tight and and hold out until the governor actually says something around may 15th mr bell and then, then graduate yeah graduation what are we doing well um we were talking about doing a drive-by graduation um, instead of a virtual graduation to give people the opportunity to at least stand up on a stage, get a few pictures, hand out a diploma and things like that. Um, there is a, a very big push in the county to get um, a number of, of agencies to disapprove of that and not to allow that to happen. Um, some of the bigger schools just don't want to do any, any sort of drive-by uh, type of graduation um, in that manner. Um, so they reached out to uh, Prosecutor Robinson um, and the health department and, and so on and so forth about, um, you know, no drive-by graduations. Um, they're, they're there's a number of schools in the county that are, that are planning virtual graduations. Um, we, we haven't planned for a virtual. We were really planning for a drive-by. Um, you know, that, that was where we were going. Um, we really wanted to have the stage. We were going to set up the stage on the front lawn of the high school. We were working with the police department already, uh, setting up some protocols for, for a drive-by. I mean, obviously, we might be out there all day to do this, but, you know, it's our seniors. It's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing to walk across the stage, get your diploma, get pictures and things like that. So we really wanted to, um, to at least try and have something for them that would be somewhat memorable um, for them uh, for graduation. Um, at this point in time, just knowing what's going on, we're probably going to have to look at some sort of virtual graduation, um, just in case we're not back in session. Um, obviously our, our, our main hope is that come June, we're back in session. We have our problem. We have our graduation, but I, I just not real sure that that's, that's possible. Um, Mike, I know you had a question first. So I'm going to go to Mike, then I'm going to go to Camilla. So Mike. Yeah, I, I had. Red and I, I don't know, just to back up uh, Dominic's question, does the governor have to update what he's decided every 15 days? So that would be coming up, I believe somewhere around May 1st, because I think his last one was around April 15th, his last update on school closings. Um, well, today he said everything is, is, is closed indefinitely. Um, he, oh. When he was asked specifically about schools, um, he said that he would not make that decision or make any announcements until May 15th. Oh, great. Although if he made Steven? the announcement. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, that's okay. No, if he made the announcement May 15th, we wouldn't be able to just go back on the 18th. No, we would still need, we would still need some time to prepare. And, and even if he wanted us to go back on the 18th, he would have to tell us in advance so we can yeah. prepare for the opening. So he may say on the 15th, yeah, we're going to open June 1st or okay. May 30th or whatever that is, because we need time to prepare. I mean, we got to, you know, what is an opening going to look like for us? Is there going to be mass temperature checks at the door as kids come in? Is everybody wearing a mask? Are we going to half day? Because if you're wearing a mask, you can't obviously eat in school because you got to take your mask off to eat in school. Um, you know, we got to we got to build some some confidence not only in our staff but also in the public to send their kids to school and have our staff to school. Um, then you have then you have the other the other issues of if we're open, is everybody else open because our staff's not coming to work if their kids aren't going to school? And it's just a domino effect and it just keeps going and going and going. So again, there has to be some discussion. It can't be like, all right, 
next, you know, on Friday, Monday, you're opening. It's not going to work. We need some more time to plan those things out. Uh, Ms. Stevens. Um, back to the topic of graduation, are any districts considering doing like a September graduation, just doing one late? Um, we have been advised by the Department of Education to be very cautious about doing anything after a student is officially officially graduated, which would be the last day of school. They're no longer your students. So um, we've been cautioned not to do anything like that. Um, so our, our our main focus has been really to focus on doing something special this year um, on June 14th or whatever date graduation was supposed to be the 16th and um, you know do something special and memorable for them at that point in time um, again fingers crossed toes crossed everything crossed that maybe we we can be back in and, and have a normal graduation but too hard to say at this moment in time Mr. Vadalaire from what I read, the NJEA said that it's a no for drive-bys and that's why no one is going to do it, is what I read and was told by someone in the union. Uh, again, I don't, I don't know why the union would be involved in a drive-by graduation. I, I don't know. Um, again, this is about kids and trying to give them an experience, um, trying to make something memorable for them. Um, but like I said, I know there is a push not to do drive-by graduation. So again, um, I'm not a huge fan of virtual graduations and things like that, but we'll do what we have to do and we'll do it to the best of our ability to make it special for, for our students. Mr. Bohm. Um, for eighth graders also, like a graduation thing is something for them? Um, I'm not as concerned with the eighth graders because they're still ours. We still have them in high school and they'll still have, you know, um, their, their high school graduation. Um, eighth grade graduation, again, um, not sure if we'll do something virtually or if we'll be back and have something in person. Um, we'll have to wait and see how that, how that works out. Okay. Ms. Stevens. Ms. No? Okay. Ms. Mr. Simano. Um, for like the, the kids that ha um, are in eighth grade now, they were supposed to be doing the DC trip. Um, if that trip obviously probably is not happening, um, are they going to be refunded or is that money staying to move over for the next year or any ideas? Um, I, I, I don't have a solid answer on that. I know uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Sanderson has been working on that with Gerber um transportation uh or tours or whatever it is um yeah it's going to be a, a sticky one i know that there's some other schools that lost their deposits and, and lost their money when they canceled so um i know he's working very hard with them um we're nowhere near that date for that trip yet anyway but i know um having a discussion with him today that um hopefully we'll have some answers to that by the end of the week okay. miss munson I, I just, I feel for the seniors, but I just want to make it known, drive by anything is a bad idea. And I, I don't support it. I, I feel for them, but it's, it's not safe. At okay. This time. Any other questions on your new business? Okay, we're going to open to the public for discussion. Switching computers here. Okay. We have two. Um, both are from Mrs. O'Reilly. The first one was uh, went on to board docs, cannot view the BOE me meeting from April 20th. I also cannot see the PowerPoint from the meeting. How can I view those? I did email her. She was able to see both of those um, this afternoon. Um, and then her second one was the, was a comment regarding uh, the auto, qual auto quality for the April 12th, 2020 board meeting on YouTube channel was very poor. Is there a way for the public can read a transcript of that meeting since we were unable to hear the meeting? Unfortunately, we do not do transcriptions of meetings, so we cannot provide that. And that is the only two comments there. And we are off to, we do not have an executive session. So we are up to 15 approval of HIV cases, high school. 
uh, resolve the Bamberg Board of Education, the approval of resolutions as outlined in the approval of HIV cases under high school. Um, so we have 15.2. Can I get a motion? Motion. Motion, Mr. Fazio, a second. Second. Second, Mr. Bale. Uh, Mr. Steinmetz, roll call vote, please. Mr. Ball? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Ms. Musson? I think, should I abstain? I, I wasn't here last week. You should abstain. Okay, abstain. Okay. Ms. Martinez? Yes. Ms. Morris? Yes. Ms. Stevens? Yes. Ms. Rusamano? Yes. Mr. Vadalaire? Yes. Ms. DeFazio? Yes. Thank okay. you. We're up to 16. HIV complaints, uh, cases, middle and elementary schools resolved at the Bamberg Court of Education, uh, the approval of the resolutions outlined and approval of HIV cases under middle and elementary schools. This is 16.2, 16.3. Can I get a motion? Motion. Motion, Mr. Fazio, second, Mr. Bohm. And Mike, can we get a roll call vote? Sure. Mr. Ball? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Ms. Musson? I think she said abstain. Abstain? Okay. Abstain. Okay. Ms. Martinez? Yes. Ms. Morris? Yes. Ms. Stevens? Yes. Ms. 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 Rosmano? Yes. I've abstained from Mr. Vadalaire and Ms. DeFazio. Yes. Um, that is our agenda for this evening. So can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion, second. Mr. Fazio. Seconded by somebody said it. I missed it. Who said second? Ms. Ms. Martinez Ms. said second. Okay. Um, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Seeing none. Meeting is adjourned. All right, everybody. We have another board meeting scheduled for next Monday. Um, we may cancel that meeting depending on how many agenda items you have, but I will let you know. Okay. All right, everybody, have a great Thanks week, and uh, we'll keep my daily updates going. Thank you. Good night. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.